In this video, we'll learn how to make arrays of object instances from a template class in P5.js. So this lets us make large groups of instance objects quickly and easily. In my code here, I've got a class template called eyeball, and it's just making some simple shapes with locations and a color assigned to them. And I can see two of those here on screen, which I've instanced using the i1 and i2 variables. Let's say we wanted multiples, maybe 20, maybe 30, maybe even more. In that case, it really makes sense to use an array rather than individual variables. So let's see if we can make some changes here uh, to save a group of instance objects inside of an array. Up at the top of my code, I'll go ahead and declare an array variable. So I'll call this eyes, and I'll initialize it just as an empty array. Now I can see in setup, uh, I've got line six and line seven, and there I'm using that new class name syntax to instance two versions of that eyeball class template. I'm gonna go ahead and comment those out and we'll take a similar approach here, but we're going to use a loop to iterate over our eyes array and populate it with as many eyeball objects as we'd like. So let's start out with a for loop and inside of that for loop, I'll go ahead and make an iterator variable. I'll just call it I and for my exit condition, uh, I'll need to set up a stopping point and this is basically what size do we want our array to be? How many elements do we want in our array? So I'll go ahead and make another variable and I'll use that to set my exit condition. So this way it'll be really easy and flexible if I ever want more or fewer versions of my object to exist in this sketch. And then every run of my loop, I'll increment that iterator variable by one. Then inside our loop, uh, we can reference that eyes array. So I'll say eyes and we want to use our iterator to hit every single index of that array. So as we go through the loop, we'll jump from one slot to another in that array. And in each element, we'll populate it with a new eyeball object. Now, because of the way my constructor is set up in my eyeball class template, it's expecting two arguments uh, when we call that constructor. So I'll need to put in a location where I want the eyeball instance to go. And for now, I'm just gonna set this to a random number between zero and width, followed by a random number between zero and height. So this will, in effect, give us a random location on the screen for each eyeball object that's in our eyes array. Now, down in our draw block, we're gonna take a similar approach. So rather than calling that show method on individual variables, I wanna iterate through the entire eyes array and call show on each element. So let's comment out these two lines and we'll set up another for loop. And here I need another iterator variable and I'll just call it J. And I wanna make sure that whatever the length of that eyes array is that I'm cycling through every single element. So I'll say J is less than the length of that eyes array. So I can get to that with this dot syntax. So I'll say eyes.length and then increase J by one every time the loop runs. So inside of our loop, I'll reference each element that's in that eyes array. And this time we're saying eyes J because that's what our iterator variable is called. And rather than setting this element equal to something, I'm gonna call that show method on it. So I'll say eyes J dot show, and then my open and close parentheses. Now again, because of the way that I've set up the show method inside of my eyeball class template, I'm expected to put a color in between those parentheses of the show method when I call it. So I'll start by making a color object. So as we cycle through the loop from zero up until whatever the length of the eyes array is, uh, I'd like to make sure I hit a range of different color values. Um, so for now, we could just say j times 10, and we could substitute that for our red value. And then for the green, let's say something like 100, and the blue, something like 100. So you can see we're basically getting different balances of red and green uh, as we loop through that array because of the way that we're changing the red value that we're piping into the show method. So I can go ahead and get rid of these commented out lines. I don't need those anymore. So some cool characteristics of what we've set up so far is that every time we run the sketch, we should get a different arrangement of objects on the screen. So you can see as I'm clicking play, we're getting different compositions uh, with different placements of the range of colors that we're dealing with. And maybe rather than having to start and stop the entire sketch, uh, I could put in uh, something in an event function here in my code. So maybe let's try a mouse pressed. 
And what I'd like to do is, when I press the mouse, rerun this loop where we're populating the array. So we'd basically be uh, changing the X and Y locations of each object when we run that loop. So I'll go ahead and copy that loop, just paste it right down into mouse press. And now I should be able to come and click on the canvas and you can see I'm just getting different compositions. I also start to get some flexibility in terms of the number of elements that I'm including in my array. And right now that's controlled by this I count variable. So I could change this to whatever I want. I could just have five maybe and I get fewer or I could have 500. You can see obviously that gets very crowded. So obviously this is a pretty simple example, but you can already start to see some of the flexibility and the powerful capabilities of combining arrays with instance objects from a class template in P5.js.